Watching Geek Entertainment Television, I'm Violet Blue, the Roving Rover Reporter. We are here at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California, for the 25th anniversary of the Commodore 64 computer. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. The world's number one selling home computer is now in a family pack, the Commodore 64, plus data cassette and joystick, four software programs including Introduction to Basic, a Teach Yourself program for the whole family. The Commodore 64 family pack, a value of $700 for just $499. Commodore 64 is a very popular computer. It's having its 25th year anniversary. Did the success of it surprise you in any way? No. After traveling and selling the pet, I have realized that what the world wants in quantity and what youth wants was a computer which has good sound mm -hmm. in color video. Mm -hmm. And we put our minds to it and we developed a chip which uh, produced the Commodore 64. So do you think the market was youth-driven for you? Yes, it was. Yes, we, I made it youth-driven. Really? Uh, I uh, went around the world uh, meeting young people in um, computer clubs oh, cool. and showing them what the computer can do. And I concentrated in a special country, which is called Germany because I am a Holocaust survivor. And because of that, I wanted to make sure that the German youth will learn from the computer what the Holocaust was all about. Wow. And we had a piece of software which did that. And uh, we became very successful. So and it was we, very personal for you? Very personal. And we actually call it the Volks computer. Were there a lot of games being played in your house? Yes, more than I liked. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever play any computer games yourself? Yes, some. Really? Yeah. Did you have any favorites? Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Did you have any games that you like to play on it? Yeah, and see if I can remember which ones. Yeah, Load Runner. Load Runner? Yeah. How did you cheat? Uh, cheat? I would, <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> of course you wouldn't. Uh, when I was growing up, my mom dated a lot of guys that had C64, so C64s were basically my babysitter. Did your C64 get you a lot of dates? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think the C64 has such a cult following? Because uh, an awful lot of people bought them. Ah. I just, uh, uh, I've been amazed talking to people in the computer industry uh, how many of them the Commodore 64 was their first computer. So how did you come to have such an awesome sound processor for the 64? By having an absolutely awesome chip designer. <laughs> really? Yeah. The uh, <laughs> guy was great. Made a fantastic chip. Uh, produced all sorts of, of really fantastically um, flexible sound generation. Uh, it, it took decades before there was a, another machine that could do what a SIG chip could do. That's fantastic. So there was no rival for a long time? Uh, not for a long time. My first question for you is the Apple II and the C64 ran on the same processor. Do you have any thoughts about why that is? Um, I didn't go through much choice of what processor to pick. In my days, there were only like three processors to choose from. Intel was too expensive. The Motorola was very inexpensive, but the 6502 was introduced. It was less expensive than all, and it was sold in a way that a normal person who didn't have a company and you know credit managers and all this stuff to fill out on forms could buy. It was that simple. It was really um, lack, of, lack of money but it was the best <laughs> processor. A lot of people say that the 64 had really excellent sound because it had a different sound chip. Why didn't the Apple have a good sound chip? Um, we added the sound chip actually in a later year, maybe around 1985 with our Apple II GS. And the GS stood for graphics and sound. Okay. We got around to it late. We were just an NTSC computer before then. And also we had shifted our direction a little towards the business user where it wasn't that important. I see. Also the... Um, Not playing too many games at work, huh? And, and also we always had this tang entanglement with the Beatles record company that we couldn't be a music device. So we had one bit of sound and we still, on that one bit of sound where the speaker sounded like, eh, like a buzzy you know, doorbell, mm -hmm. it was even with that um, horrible sound, we still lost our lawsuits with the Beatles. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that's awful. So let me ask you this. Uh, this is the anniversary of the C64. Did you have a C64? I did not, uh -oh. uh, but I've used one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they were, they were really, really neat. So the C64 has quite a cult following. Why do you think it has such a cult following? 
Well, there, there were, but because it was so good. Okay. Uh, because it, it really caught the attention of a generation mm -hmm. when gaming began. Right. And, and I do think that uh, it sticks. <laughs>